Welcome to this second part dedicated to simulating a memory device. Uh, we are going to focus on uh, how memory devices are simulated in the Java system simulator. But uh, first of all, I will assume that uh, you already watched the previous video uh, in which we described the different uh, memory options available. So if you did not uh, watch it, please uh, pause this video and watch uh, the first part. Okay, so uh, when it comes to memory, we already discussed in the previous video that we need to have an address, we need to have a way of um, uh, storing data, uh, and this is characterized by the internal data size and uh, then uh, when an address is presented to the device the device either uh, reads an uh, internal data location and presents this data to uh, the data bus or uh, will read the data bus and store the location uh, in an internal location uh, so, in this context, uh, we are interested in uh, the internal data size and uh, the external uh, data bus size. Uh, and uh, apart from the read and write operations, uh, the Java system simulator also requires an uh, initialization function and a configuration function. The configuration function will be uh, called by the system when uh, the memory device is created and the initialization method will be uh, invoked uh, when the simulated system is powered up and also in the case of a system reset. So, uh, working in uh, Java, uh, first we start by creating an uh, interface. The Java System Simulator already provides a generic device interface, which assumes uh, there are these two methods, configure and initialize. Uh, then uh, we can define a generic data device. Uh, this is a device that uh, extends the generic device and uh, also requires the implementation of uh, read and write uh, methods and uh, may throw uh, memory access exception. Uh, now you see here I've um, implemented this as uh, receiving a long address and returning a long value in the case of the read row time uh, or uh, receiving a long address and a long value in the case of the write method. Now, if you watch carefully the previous uh, video, uh, you may recall that uh, the address size may be, uh, for example, 16 bits so definitely less than long and uh, the value also may be uh, 8 bits or even 4 bits or 16 bits and so on uh, but uh, i've decided here to use uh, a long as a data type uh, in order to allow for uh, different uh, data sizes and of course only the uh, used bits will be set uh, in both uh, value and uh, address. Okay, now that we have a generic data device interface, we can uh, implement a memory device, uh, but uh, there is actually no uh, additional method uh, required in this interface. However, all the uh, memory implementations uh, will extend this interface. Now let's take a look at the simplest uh, memory device. Uh, 
uh, you see I'm not directly implementing the interface but instead I'm extending an abstract memory device we'll take a look at that soon but first let's see how uh, memory with uh, internal uh, data size of 8 bits and uh, external uh, uh, data size uh, again 8 bits uh, is implemented this is the simplest uh, implementation we have uh, mem uh, this is actually an array of uh, bytes uh, and we directly use the address uh, to read or uh, write uh, in this array as I said it's an array of bytes so uh, the data even though uh, we receive it as long in this case uh, it has to be converted to a byte so there is this explicit cast also uh, there is a check to see if the address is actually inside this uh, allocated uh, memory space uh, if not uh, there will be a memory access exception uh, either for read or write okay so this is the simplest uh, possible implementation uh, we will look at other implementations but first let's see what this abstract memory device is uh, so the abstract memory device implements the memory device and we remember this extends generic data device uh, which in turn extends uh, generic device okay so the abstract memory device uh, defines this uh, storage space as I said is just an array of bytes it also implements the configure method which uh, basically allocates memory uh, and implements an uh, initialization uh, method which allows uh, for the memory to be either initialized with zeros or with random values uh, or with a fixed value that uh, of course may be different uh, from zero also it's possible during this initialization stage it's possible to uh, load a hex file uh, i'm not going to go into details right now about uh, hex files but uh, we'll probably uh, have an uh, episode uh, about this form uh, so the load hex routine is also here and uh, apart from this uh, each uh, specific uh, memory device implementation will need to provide its own read and write uh, methods as you already saw uh, this is the simplest implementation uh, now we can look, uh, for example, at uh, another implementation. Uh, in this case, uh, we have an internal uh, word size of 8 bits, uh, but an external uh, data bus of 16 bits. So in this case, uh, when uh, the read method is called, uh, there is an address given but uh, the memory is expected to reply with uh, a 16 bits uh, numerical value so what's happening uh, we read from the internal uh, memory and uh, we combine uh, two bytes in order to form the 16 bit value uh, on the other hand when uh, the write method is called uh, we'll receive a uh, data value and this is expected to be uh, 16 bits of course uh, data uh, the data is specified as a long value but uh, we are only interested in uh, 16 bits and uh, this data is uh, split into these uh, two values which are stored at consecutive addresses in the uh, memory buffer uh, 
Uh, of course, uh, other implementations uh, are possible, uh, including perhaps storing uh, as integer values or something else. So if you have any ideas on how to optimize this, uh, please leave comments below. Okay, so see you next time.